My name is Bob Sergener. I'm the founder and managing director of Neat Acoustics. Last year, we celebrated 30 years of our first loudspeaker, the Neat Petite, and uh, that's what we're going to talk about today. I've always had a, a passionate interest in music since I was very small and I first learned how to play the guitar in 1967, but I subsequently learned to sort of play double bass, piano, banjo, accordion and various other curious instruments. I've played in live music and recording since the end of the 1960s right through to the present day. I still work as a musician and record regularly. It's the passion for playing music that has driven the design of neat loudspeakers over the years. By the 1980s, I found myself living in London and in between tours with various musical acts that I was working with, I needed to find a way of earning a living in some other way. And I ended up setting up a business which was buying and selling and repairing hi-fi equipment from my home. By the end of the 1980s, I'd moved back up to Darlington and ended up setting up a shop there which became Neat Hi-Fi and that was the origin of Neat Acoustics. We found that there was quite an interest in uh, small compact loudspeakers and there were some very good designs on the market already at that time but we did feel that each of them had their own individual failing or flaw that rendered them a little bit unsatisfactory for long-term listening. So with no previous experience of designing loudspeakers, we naturally decided to design our own. And we started off with a prototype and developed it over an 18 month period. And I can remember the first night that we put all the bits and pieces together in our dem room one night, it was a Friday night after the shop had closed. And we sat down with great expectations and it sounded absolutely horrible. So we went back to the drawing board, kept tweaking and changing things, and within a few days it actually sounded quite respectable, and within two or three months it was actually sounding what we thought was very good indeed. We had such a good response from people visiting the shop uh, over that period that we decided that we would see how it went down at, a, at an international hi-fi show. So we took it to the Heathrow show in 1990, essentially still as a prototype, and we were just overwhelmed by the reception that the speaker received from press, trade, public alike. So at that point we decided that going forward we were going to be a, a loudspeaker manufacturer. So the Petite became what you call an overnight success for us and we soon realised that the shop premises we were working from were too small really to conduct a manufacturing operation from. In 1994 therefore we took over some factory premises in Barnard Castle and from that point we started to increase the range of products that we offered and now we have 14 different models in the neat range. Throughout the different models and the different ranges within our production, there is more that binds the speakers together than separates them in design. If we start with the IOTA, which is a speaker we launched in 2011 and has been a tremendous success for us. It's a very, very small speaker, but it's a serious loudspeaker at the same time. It can be used in small rooms, it can be used on desktops or bookshelves or wall mounted if necessary, but it always presents a very convincing and realistic interpretation of the recording. And the IOTA range has subsequently been expanded with different configurations of the main design. The Motive range appeals to a more traditional kind of listener. It's a more traditional design in essence, and it's probably of greater appeal to somebody who doesn't want something maybe too out of the ordinary or too exotic in their listening room. But again, the point and the intent of these designs is to provide a big soundstage, a very convincing soundstage from compact and elegant boxes.
The Strata range combines two elements that are, I think, quite unique. It's the isobaric base loading principle, which enables a loudspeaker to use two drive units working together to deliver much deeper and much more controlled bass than you would otherwise get from a given sized enclosure. And this is combined with the true ribbon tweeter, which is a very fast, organic presentation and very open. Uh, the combination of these two is, I think, unique to neat acoustics. I don't think anybody else uses that configuration at all. And the Strata range is very exciting for us because it's uh, been really, really well received and uh, has been a big success. At the top of our range are the uh, Ultimatum models. Now these designs incorporate a lot of principles that are very important to me as a designer. Naturally, the use of the isobaric base loading system is incorporated in all these models, but in different ways in each model. There's the use of separate sub-baffles connected to the main plywood cabinet via a polyethylene membrane, which gives the drive units a very inert platform to perform at their optimum. Each drive unit in the Ultimate Models has its own dedicated internal cavity, so none of the drive units can affect the performance of any of the others. They're all separated completely. There's also the unusual implementation of upward firing super tweeters on the top panel of the speaker, which lend an airy and open-ended quality to the presentation. And these elements all combine to make the ultimatum range amongst the finest, I think, that you can possibly buy regardless of price. The performance is up there with the very best. Right from the first iteration of the Petite and through to all of the current models in our range, all of our loudspeakers have received amazing reviews and have won awards from magazines all around the world. Over the years, there had been four iterations of the Petite loudspeaker. And as it was coming up to the 30th anniversary of the first run of Petites, we thought it'd be a nice idea to design an anniversary edition. And that's what became the Petite 30. For the Petite 30, we took it right back to basics. We started completely from scratch. Uh, new bass drive unit, new tweeter, new crossover, slightly different dimensions to the cabinet. And what we have achieved with the Petite 30 is a speaker that has all the innate musical ability that the original Petite had, but exceeds the original Petite in all technical aspects as well. So here we have the original Petite. It used a titanium coated plastic dome tweeter and a six and a half inch doped paper cone base mid drive unit. And these units were fixed in place with uh, silicone rather than fixing screws because that sounded really good but it made it a real nuisance when you had to repair them. But it worked really well, it sounded great. And on the rear, we have a, a very low Q port. That's a low magnification port, so it keeps the base really tight. And bi-wire terminals, we call them bi-wire terminals, but we never really intended them for bi-wiring. We intended them for bi-amping the speaker, which is using two power amplifiers to drive each speaker. And that's a system that we still recommend to this day. Of course, the use of a six and a half inch base drive unit in a seven litre cabinet such as this one shouldn't work. Um, it's, it's actually too big a drive unit to work in this context. But we didn't know that, so we made it work. <laughs> So here we have the Petite 30, the anniversary edition. There are 100 pairs of these have been made. The main difference from the original Petite, you will note, is that it's got a smaller diameter base mid-range unit, and this is a mineral-loaded polypropylene unit, and it also uses a very unusual tweeter. It's an air motion transformer tweeter, which is a um, very fast, very organic sounding and very open sounding tweeter and they blend very well together. The rear shows you an unusual setup here with two ports in what we call staggered tuning. The um, one port can be blocked off, which gives you a certain emphasis in the bass region. And you can unblock that port to give a sort of broader, fuller bass presentation. It just gives some flexibility for different room types to get the optimum bass balance. And again, the use of the bi-amp, bi-wire, bi-amp terminals common to the very original Petite. 
The Petite 30 was only available in piano black like this or piano white finish. And yeah, it's been a tremendous success for us. So although the Petite 30, uh, the anniversary edition, was only a limited run of 100 pairs, the response to it has led to demand for something like the Petite 30 that would be an ongoing version of the Petite in our range. So we've taken it back to the original dimensions of the very first Petite, with the same contours, but using the same ingredients exactly as the Petite 30. So the same mineral-loaded polypropylene cone and base drive unit, and the air motion transformer tweet are slightly smaller than the anniversary. Around the back it's pretty much the same as the staggered port tuning system so you can do the same adjustment for different rooms. It comes as standard with a single pair of connection terminals but they can be ordered with by wire terminals, by amp terminals on request. And this speaker will be the Petite Classic is going to be called and it will be available for shipping in September 2022. At NEAT we're always tinkering and messing about with different materials, technologies, configurations, drive units and what's more important for us really is not necessarily the materials but the implementation of those and how to make them work together in a cohesive way and that's what we will continue to do into the future. There's been considerable interest lately um, in the idea of using our speakers in active mode. Uh, and that is something we're currently working on, so watch this space. Mm -hmm.